Blessed be God, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope in God's cause to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Creator of all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh Lord, make us have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name, for you never fail to help and govern those whom you have set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Job. The Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man, and I will question you, and you shall declare to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know, or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sung, or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together, and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy, or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling band, and prescribed bounds for it and set bars and doors, and said, Thus far you have come and no farther, and here shall be your proud ways be stopped. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We give you thanks, O oh God, for you are good. You are mercy and you are forever. Let all those whom you have redeemed proclaim. That you redeemed them from the land of the world. That you gathered them out of the lands. From the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some went down to the sea in ships. And by their trade to be waters. They beheld your works, O oh God. And your wonders in the deep. Then you spoke, and a stormy wind arose, which tossed high the gates of the sea. They mounted up to the heavens and fell back to the depths. Their hearts melted because of their peril. They reeled and staggered like drunkards and were at Then they cried to you in their trouble, and you delivered them from their distress. You stilled the storm to a whisper, and the waves of the sea. Then were they glad because of the calm, and the God and star were they not before. Let them give thanks to you for your mercy, and wonders to you for your children. Let them exalt you in the congregation of the people, and praise you in the house of the elders. A reading from the second book, Corinthians. As we work together with Christ, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way through great endurance in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, vicarity, knowledge, 
patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of the righteousness for the right hand and the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known. As dying and see we are alive, as punished and not yet killed, <coughs> as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak as to children. Open wide your hearts also. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to the other side and leaving the crowd behind they took with them in the boat just as he was other boats were with them a great windstorm arose and waves beat into the boat so that the boat was already being swamped but he was in the stern asleep on the cushion and they woke him up and said to him teacher do you not care that we are perishing he woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe, and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? In the name of God, Creator, Redeemer, and Sanctifier. Amen. Amen. So a few weeks back, it was a Thursday evening, and I was at home, and I thought, I'm just going to take a little bike ride. I think I'll just hop on the Midtown Greenway from my home in South Minneapolis and make my, my way west toward like Lake of the Isles and just a little spin 
around there and come home. Well, of course, I'm on like, the Midtown Greenway, and there's a big detour sign. <laughs> and I makes me have to get off, go north, and then into heavy traffic. And then the, I miss the detour sign that would take me back to the Greenway to kind of go on my merry way. And so then I'm heading 5 o'clock, rush hour, heading south on like one of the big ones, Lindale or Hennepin or one of those. And I thought, ah. It's, okay, I'm going to make my way, I know, I can do this, I'm going to make my way to Lake Nokomis. That would be fun. So I made my way south and then east, and I got to Lake Nokomis, and I looked up to the heavens, and it was one of those, like, crazy storms that blew in. You might remember, it was a Thursday evening, and the sky was, like, dark, and the wind was rushing, and it was like Cecil B. DeMille. <laughs> and um, I huddled under a park shelter and I called a friend for <laughs> salvation, for help, uh, for a ride. And on the phone, I said, It's Armageddon! <laughs> totally being dramatic, but also kind of that deep primal fear. As I saw people out on the water, still in their sailboats, because this came so fast, and children still in the water, and this fear. Um, and it made me, makes me to this day, wonder what kind of a disciple I would have been there in the boat of the storm with Jesus. Because we just heard from the gospel that, that um, Guy read, evening had come, and he said to them, let us go across to the other side. They took him with them in the boat, and a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat. The boat was being swamped. Jesus was in the stern, asleep on the cushion, and the disciples say, do you not care that we are perishing? Jesus woke, he rebuked the wind, peace, be still. And he said to his disciples, why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? Here we are, each of us here, coming together to worship, to baptize, to be together. It's a little bit like climbing into the boat with Jesus, with the storm brewing, and in a certain kind of basic, the basic question that I find myself asking as we gather in this boat here together is, what does it mean to have faith? Some of you, I have referenced him before, and some of you know him, uh, Richard Moore, who's a Franciscan priest, a spiritual teacher and guide, who lives in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and has like a global following. He offers daily meditations that come into our inboxes. And this week, um, he offered one that I want to reflect on today. And I, I've just been torn about whether I want to hand these out. I, and I want to, so I'm going to ask for some help, sir. You can, I don't know that I have quite enough, so please share, Marilyn. And then, um, so don't look, because it's like the teacher, don't get distracted. <laughs> <laughs> but don't get lost in it entirely, I'm going to ask. Don't forget the choir. Thank you. So we are in this boat, in the storm, and asking, what does it mean to have faith? And Richard Rohr this week offered this little meditation where he outlines our spiritual lives as a 
journey with certain developmental stages, a spiritual, a spiritual journey with its own stages. And this isn't just like an intellectual exercise, but an invitation to examine our own lives, to see how God calls us into a life of faith. And just like babies and young children have developmental stages that they go through, smiling, crawling, walking, speaking, our faith, it, our faith develops so we are invited into, into a maturing faith, each step necessary to, the, to get to the next. And sometimes we go back. It's not necessarily a linear journey. But all of it, this whole, this whole um, pattern of faith, maturation, is all to move closer to, into communion with God. So I'm going to walk through these stages. I'm going to walk through them very briefly, and I'm only going to go deeper into three of them. But I do want to walk through these together. Stage one, my body and self-image are who I am. This has to do with security, safety, and defense needs. This would be me at Lake Nokomis, reverting back to stage one. Just that kind of fear and um, looking for security and safety. Stage two, I want to look at a little bit more deeply. Stage two, my external behavior is who I am. We need to look good from the outside and to hide those parts of us that we don't want to show others. Um, we, we have, I think that, I think that each of us, just because we're human, we put on our masks and we want to present a, a particular image of, to the world that we think that they want to see that makes us look good. And in this part of development, we like to hide those parts that seem a little bit less attractive. I'll tell a little story here. I remember as a child uh, being in, in um, church, and it used to be the tradition that almost everyone would enter the space and kneel before worship and offer prayers. And some people still do that, be getting themselves ready for worship. Well, my Sunday school teacher came in behind me in the pew behind me, and she was a very proper, upright person. She had a really good mask. And she knelt behind me, and she went, one, two, three, four, five, and counting to ten. That would be an image that she was presenting to the world. That as a child, that really had quite an effect on me. Like we have to pretend in certain ways. And maybe she was had other holier thoughts going on. But that's the, that's the, <laughs> maybe I want to give her the benefit of the doubt. But, um, but I understand this. I understand this this human need to present in a certain way, perhaps particularly around piety. Um, stage three, my thoughts and feelings are who I am. Stage four, I don't know why it's not on your handout, but it is. Stage four, my deeper intuitions and felt knowledge in my body are who I am. Stage five, my shadow self is who I am. And you can read along there. <clears throat> Stage six, <clears throat> I am empty and powerless. Some call this sitting in God's waiting room, but it is more often known as the dark night of the soul. At this point, almost any attempt to save ourselves by any superior behavior, morality, or prayer technique will fail us. All we can do is to ask, wait, and trust. God is about to become real. The false or separate self is dying in a major way. The dark night of the soul when I realize my own powerlessness. And I think perhaps the, 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 uh, I, the example of this that I come to is when I think about people wrestling with addiction. And it's like, I have no power in myself. I, can, I cannot save myself. I have to give it over. And in 
this emptiness, I can encounter the fullness of God's presence and power. So that's stage six. Stage seven, I am much more than who I thought I was. Stage eight, the Father and I are one. Here there is only God. And we realize that we can follow God, that grace and mystery guide us. And we kind of think, I think that maybe this is the, the end game, that grace, and we give ourselves over to grace and mystery, that God will lead us and can lead us. And yet, um, this, in this developmental kind of theory, there's one more, and that is stage nine. I am just me, warts and all. We are now fully detached from our own self-image and living in God's image of us, which includes and loves both the good and the bad. We experience true serenity and freedom. This is the peace the world cannot give. And we come to rest fully in God. I want to take a moment with this one. On Friday, I well, I have a group of women clergy I gather with once a month, and we pray together, and we just kind of journey together and share honestly with one another. And on Friday, we went on retreat at the Saint to the Saint Jane House in North Minneapolis. The director there is Brian Mogren, and some of you may remember Brian. He came here and spoke with us. I had invited him to come speak at a forum because Brian and the St. Jane House, to me, are kind of the embodiment of full and radical, hospi full and radical hospitality in God's name. Um, this is a house in North Minneapolis. It was founded by the Visitation Sisters. It's a place of radical welcome. And when you, the women who, I arranged this, and the women who came, they had not been there before, and they spoke, like, they spoke about my experience, which is as soon as they entered into that home, they could feel an abiding sense of God's peace and love and communion. It's a place for all, of all religions or no religion at all. It's a place for people who grieve. It got, every week there's a group of mothers who, who gather who have lost children to gun violence or to prison. It's a place where people gather weekly to meditate. It's a place of joy. Throughout the winter, they teach people how to make ice lanterns. Uh, right now, they're in a big, big class of how to declutter, decluttering with Jane. It's a place of joy, acceptance, love, communion, and it's a place of beauty. And one of the, um, the guiding quotes uh, for the St. Jane House is a quote by St. Francis de Sales. You see it all over, and this quote goes like this. Be who you are and be that well. Be who you are and be that well. I would say that is a mature affirmation of faith. To come before God, warts and all, knowing that this creator God loves us, sees us, claims us, and that, you know what, we can do that ourselves, too. That in all the turmoil, turmoil the storminess, the self-judgment, all of that, God asks us to step into who we were created to be and to be that well. That is mature faith. And it's not like this linear thing, I go from one to nine, and I'm, I've arrived, because Lord knows, I know I go back to one pretty darn quickly, and it's easy to put those masks on. This is a, this is a lifelong journey of maturation and of trust, moving toward communion. And I will say that 
baptism, what baptism is about is about getting into the boat here with Jesus. Getting into this boat with all the stormy seas, knowing that Jesus is there and will rebuke the winds and bring us ultimately into peace. And as we gather at baptism, those of us who witness this, we will renew our baptismal vows, remembering that we are in this boat. And that it's not an easy boat to be in. And sometimes it's hard to be in the, in the boat with the people we're in the boat with. But it's a journey that we share together. And it's a journey that's not about shame. It's not about judgment. But it's about invitation. It's about invitation into continuing this journey together, believing that we are called toward fullness of communion. And it's about being compassionate. That understanding Richard Rohr's kind of model for this, I think helps us have compassion for ourselves and helps us have compassion for others who may not be in the same place that we are in. And ultimately, to be about hope. So here we are in the boat, and there are plenty of concerning winds. There are plenty of storms. And Jesus says to the wind, peace, be still. I have to just, as I wrap it up here, I just have to circle back to Lake Nokomis. Because my, as I was waiting for my friend to save me, you know, the clouds parted. And I took my bike and I made myself my way over to the sandy beach. And don't you know what I saw? A big old rainbow. And it was, you know, just a reminder. A reminder of God's presence and of God's hope. God's peace. And we've been singing about it from the beginning. All faithful people have been singing about this from the beginning. And we, we said in the words from the song, Then they cried to you in their trouble, and you delivered them from their distress. You stilled the storm to a whisper and quieted the waves of the sea. Then were they glad because of the calm, and you brought them to the harbor they were bound for. So I give thanks for being in this boat with you, making our way to the harbor. And it's really good to sail together and to welcome others in the boat. Amen. I invite the family and the godparents to come forward. And I invite the congregation to stand as you are able.
Will you, who witness these battles, do all in your power to support this person in his life in Christ? We yeah. will. Let us join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil? And whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will with God's help. Let us now pray for this person who is to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver him, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open his heart to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Heal him with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep him in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach him to love others in the power of the spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send him into the world and witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring him to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O oh Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. At this point, we'll make our way, I invite everyone to join the procession, we'll make our way to the font, and please come, come, come in closely here to me, make room for others, and we'll be there.
the Lord our God. It is the right to give God thanks and praise. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, God, for the water of baptism. In it, we were in it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in jo joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and reborn again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen.
loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways, but we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you did not forget us. Time and again, you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day, we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we sing. Thank mm-hmm. you. 
grace of God for the people of God.
so that I'll be gone Thursday until late July. And that's all in the in the um, weekly email. With, there's information in there about pastoral coverage and, and so on. Finally, I kind of wanted to circle back around to my sermon. Um, I do believe that we're individually called to patterns of life that help us grow in, in our own individual faith. And I also think that as a community, we, we make our way through these stages. And um, we have a new committee that's forming under the wonderful leadership of Scott Clark, but I'm working closely with him. And um, this is a, 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 a group that is um, putting together ad adult formation opportunities for the coming year. Um, so, like Bible study and the various things that form us in our faith, we're putting together a whole array of things to, to look to plan for the coming year. And we've come up with a clever name for the group, knowing that our group, our congregation does things from the bottom up, like organically, things arise organically. We're calling ourselves the organic formers. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, if you want to join that group, um, be in touch with Scott Clark or myself, and we will, and you'll be looking for opportunities to continue to be warmed in our faith. I'm going to invite the young people who are going to camp, and any adults who might be going to camp, to come forward. And I invite the congregation to stand. Yay, thank you for being here. We have eight young people from St. David's going to camp, and this is four of them. And Anna Bellsbrock is already at camp because she's part of the leadership, so she's running things for your arrival. So that's why she's not with us today. Um, so I will offer you this blessing and this prayer. Actually, let's say it all together if we could. Gracious, <laughs> We give you thanks for the beauty of creation and for bringing each one of us in your divine image. For our offer of grace to pray on these unknowns of the Jews, that in the days to come they may feel your presence, know your love, and be awakened to your spirit. Guard and protect them until they are returned to us in safety. All this we ask in the name of Jesus, who teaches us to love you. God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Creator, the Redeemer, the Sanctifier, be with you this day and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Please to love and serve the Lord. Thanks. Thanks.